Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. My name is Mukolisi, the son of Nube. I'm here in this uh, broadcast with Walter Sununguli Mbongolwane. He is the spokesperson of Zanu PF in South Africa district. Some of you have already known, uh, seen him. In fact, we did interview him before the elections that were on the 23rd and 24th of August this year. He's back here. We want to touch base on what actually transpired in that election. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Welcome to the others. Um, the elections have come and gone. You said the PF is going to win. They have won, but there's a lot of controversy behind that. But before we get into questions, can you just give, for the benefit of the viewers, a brief uh, account of what happened from, uh, I'm interested mostly, in the campaigning period, just briefly, then on the actual day of 14, up to the announcement of the results. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, as you saw, the pre-election period, or the campaign period, it was peaceful. Uh, our president continued to preach that everybody must be given the right to exercise their democratic right to vote without any hindrance. And every political party that wanted to converse for votes, they were allowed to do so. And every uh, institution that supports democracy was uh, prepared. And voter education went on well. And uh, during the election period, it was very peaceful, except some minor hiccups in Harare and Blawa. But otherwise, everything went well. And uh, the post-election period also was peaceful. The, the, like I told you last time, that uh, we are winning the election, and we won the election resoundingly, and everybody is happy. And as we move forward, uh, we are now building the country, and uh, we, we invite everybody who participated in the election to join us in building the country. Okay, yeah, like I said, I did go to Zimbabwe in May. I didn't see any uh, anything that I would say spoke to the violence that was taking place. I stayed there for two weeks, but there are some worrying reports that when I came back here, I met uh, the main one being that um, Triple C came that uh, more than a hundred of their rallies were either disbanded by the police they were, or were not allowed to go on. That's the first one. The second one being, I think you saw what happened in Harare in Glenview, where a triple C supporter by the name Tinashe Chitsunge uh, was killed and they are alleging that they had booked this venue but when they got there they found a, a ZANU PF uh, councillor was it MP candidate he had already set up some a game of soccer there there were people were drinking beer it set up some speakers there can you tell us what exactly happened there in those two incidents, first the banning of rallies by of the opposition, especially Triple C, and the incident which led to the death of Chitsunge in a venue that Triple C say they had booked. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, Zanpev is not involved in okaying the rallies that will eventually go on. It is the duty of the police to to manage that process. Yeah, and Zanpev also suffered they similar things. Zanpev okay, also was also uh, disadvantaged by some of the police uh, responses to our request for rallies. So what Triple C experienced is not unique. Uh, most political parties, especially Zanpev, had more rallies being denied uh, by the police for various reasons. But we accept that uh, the police were doing their duties, and we, we, we think that the Triple C uh, is elevating that because, as part of their strategic uh, uh, ambiguity, which is actually strategic confusion, because uh, uh, it was not something that actually disadvantaged them in the process of canvassing for votes. Okay, and then there is another worrying incident that I've almost forgotten of. A deputy, she was a deputy minister of tourism, Papra Roti. I think you, you heard the incident where a ZANU PF supporter by the name Danger was arrested by a policeman 
and we had some audios, worrying audios in which he was insulting this police officer for doing his job. And eventually we were told that the guy has disappeared, that is the policeman, he has disappeared. So these are some of the incidences that also, you are saying that police are the ones who okay the rallies, that is true. But we have here someone from ZANU-PF interfering with police duties. So would you say that they didn't have a hand in cancelling some of these triple C rallies or, dis or police disrupting them? What I can tell you is that ZANU-PF does not condone violence. ZANU-PF does not condone criminality. If uh, the person that you mentioned yeah. uh, interfered with the work of the police, uh, I think uh, those who are aggrieved should have reported that to, to the law enforcement agency so that the matter is taken up. So if that has not been reported, then we cannot talk any further because we don't know, there's no, there's no one who has uh, laid any grievance against that person. Yeah, but we're talking about police here who are being victimized for arresting a ZANU-PF supporter. That, now, if you elevate it to the arrest of a minister, do you think there would be fairness or there will be another victimization case against the same police? Because we're talking about police that are hamstrung by a political party which interferes with their, with, 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 their, with their duties. And the same person gets a ministerial post again after the election, after all this controversy. No, like, like, like I'm saying, as long as there is no one who reported that person to law enforcement, we can't, we can't speculate, we can't just talk out of perception to say police are victimized when we, we, we know that there was no complaint against that person. So uh, if, like you alleged that uh, the person disappeared, you have proof that the person disappeared as a result of uh, the threat that was issued. But even that, why has that not been investigated? Because the police have got a, a constitutional duty to investigate without fear or favor. They are protected by the constitution of Zimbabwe. They cannot uh, say this one is a minister and we, we are not going to investigate. We have seen ministers getting arrested in Zimbabwe. Okay, uh, I, I'll leave that because our time is limited. Now, after the elections, the SAT uh, election observer mission the EU observer mission, the Commonwealth observer mission, all unanimously agree that there were some aspects of the elections, especially the manner in which ZEC handled the elections, which did not meet the minimum standards, uh, international and local standards of running an election. What would you say about that? Well, there are concerns, but you should also look at their final report, uh, which is what matters. They are, in their final report, they endorse the election uh, they, as free and fair and as an expression of the will of the people of Zimbabwe. So anything that was said in their preliminary report has been trumped by what they have said in their final report, which says that, of course, there are concerns that they have raised, which they, they have recommended. We, we, we improve, the, the ZEC improve on it, but that does not nullify or uh, say the elections were not free and fair. So as far as uh, Zambia is concerned, this was a democratic process. Uh, it is never 100%, uh, it is never 100% perfect, but it is always work in progress. There is no democratic process or election anywhere in the world which uh, doesn't have uh, hiccups here and there. The same applies in Zimbabwe, and this one was endorsed by the SADC as a, a very fair uh, process. Uh, is uh, endorsed by the report which they released yesterday. Yeah, but the the Triple C and other opposition parties are mentioning here, Zapu, there is the Uza led by Valerio. They are all saying that there was especially voter intimidation. There is a case of forever associates of Zimbabwe. They had what they called exit polls outside polling, polling stations. But now one would say an exit poll is conducted when somebody has already voted, but we saw people before they voted, they were forced to pass through a fuzz desk where they had their details taken down, they had their phone numbers taken down, and they were told that when they come back, they must have uh, serial numbers of, their, of the ballot papers that they used to vote. Wasn't that some form of voter intimidation which then puts a dent on the outcome of the election? 
Look, uh, uh, I cannot speak for for that uh, for the forever associates of Zimbabwe, but I know that there are many groups that were in Zimbabwe that were conducting one research or another about the election. And the next poll is indeed done before we prior the election. You can't do the next poll before the election. But it's a, it's a predictive poll to say we are predicting what will happen. Uh, but again, for you to base uh, the complaint on Triple C is to uh, have a very long shot because we know Triple C was not ready for the election. They didn't have structures, they didn't have a constitution, they didn't have enough polling agents. So what they are doing is to muddy the waters so that they justify to their legion of followers uh, as to why they did not uh, come on top in this election. But this is a democratic process. We expect that uh, after the election, those who have won and those who have lost, they embrace each other. Those who have lost, they accept the election. That is what democracy is about. But we don't see people see doing that. Why? Because it is part of their strategic ambiguity, which is full of confusion. Because in a democratic process, Actually, when you embrace the election, you also part, you become part of the winners. But as Triple C is there, true to their form, they are confused. Yeah, but it's not only Triple C. I've said even Zapu, even Elizabeth Valerius Uza, yesterday we had a seminar in our offices where almost everyone who was there was blaming Zek for failing to conduct a proper election and even when the SAT election observer mission blamed the ZEC, we didn't hear the ZEC responding. We had Sanu PF in fact attacking especially the person of Nevers Mumba which shows that in a way if you attack ZEC you're attacking Sanu PF. So would you say there is a line of demarcation between Sanu PF and ZEC or it's one and the same thing? Or one runs the other? ZEC is an independent body which runs elections in Zimbabwe. We also had our complaints against some of the, the issues that uh, ab 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 about the management of the election. Uh, but because we are a responsible party, we, we lead the society of Zimbabwe. We also uh, are responsible for the governance of uh, the country. We cannot always uh, complain even when some of the things can be uh, sorted out in a democratic process. The, the parties that were here that spoke to you, all of them had a gripe with Zach. Uh, there is a pattern because all of them lost the election. So they, they, they need to find something to communicate to their followers. And that something is to say we were robbed. But uh, that won't fly because the people of Zimbabwe know who won the election. They know who is working. They know who has been working. They are happy with the Zambiaf uh, win. Yeah, so when you say that you had also your own problems with Zach, why then would you be out there to defend the same uh, body that you had a problem with in the face of uh, somebody pointing out these same problems that you also hear? There are mechanisms. When Zek uh, has got some shortcomings, there are mechanisms. For example, when the ballot boxes or ballot papers did not reach the polling stations in time, we had an issue with that. And, but there are mechanisms to resolve those issues without throwing uh, mud at people. So we did engage them, and they explained why uh, the issues were like that. So we were satisfied with the exact explanations. So we, we are not going to respond the same way other parties respond, because we are Zanpia. Okay, uh, and then after the election, there are also still allegations of repression against the opposition. Mainly Triple C, Job Sikala has been languishing in prison for more than 484 days now. We hear that is ill. There are a number of Triple C uh, councillors, supporters, and MPs who have been arrested, either detained or taken to the courts for a number of a rough number of uh, charges of or allegations. Let me say, we have the issue of gift hostalosis. Here. We have several other people in Harare who have been arrested by the police, and these uh, the opposition that is Triple C. They are accusing you of trying to find a way because you couldn't get the two-thirds majority that we, we are told you were gunning for. Now they are saying that you are trying to create a situation whereby some of their members are taken out of parliament so that you can 
conduct by-elections and win, get the two-thirds majority and change the constitution. Those are speculative uh, uh, issues that they are, they are Why should we, why, why, why are we looking for a two-thirds majority? Because uh, the constitution that is there is sufficient. Well, why, why do we want to change the constitution? We said we want to change the constitution. And uh, it's not true. Those people who are arrested, they have got uh, criminal offenses probably that they've committed and they must go and account at uh, police stations. So Zanupiov does not instigate or does not prescribe as to who should be arrested and who should not be arrested. The police do their work. Uh, those people must just go to the police station and explain themselves. Uh, you also mentioned um, uh, the, the, the other person who has been in prison for a long time. Yeah, yeah look, uh, the, the, if, if you are bringing that issue, it is something which the courts are dealing with. And Zanupiov has, no, has, no has no role to play in the court process. And if anyone wants to know, they should go to the courts and find out why he has been kept for so long. So are you saying that ZANU-PF has got nothing to do with the arrest of Triple C members? Absolutely. <laughs> no, nothing. ZANU-PF is not responsible for the arresting. It's not the arresting authority. There are, there are institutions of uh, democracy. There are institutions in Zimbabwe. There's a, there's a tendency for people to blame ZANU-PF for everything that happens under the sun, which, which, which is unfair because uh, ZANPF also uh, accounts to the same institutions that uh, these people must go and account to. So it's not true that ZANPF has anything to do with the arrest of these people. Then someone would say, why specifically is C being targeted and not any other party and not ZANPF? Because you are not trying to tell me that ZANPF officials do not commit offenses. We heard even during the campaign some people calling for the matter, clearly the matter of Nelson Chamisa, they were not arrested. That is inciting violence. No, look, uh, what, I, what I can say is that uh, C has been very desperate to, to win the election, and they promised their, their people that their strategy of ambiguity will carry them through. They came up with all sorts of things that they had uh, a way of making sure that they win the election. But the only way to win the election is to win the hearts and minds of the people. So now they realize that uh, they, they didn't get that. They were about uh, committing crimes, and they are not being targeted. They are the ones who are targeting uh, themselves by behaving in a manner which is uh, outside of the expectations of, of the law. So now when they are arrested, they blame Zambia. Zambia has nothing to do with those uh, actions. But now if somebody commits a crime and they are arrested, we expect them to be sentenced. And none of these people has been sentenced. Some have been called and then they are released and told that the state will proceed by way of someone's. And then this dies. And then, then now this grieves, gives credence to the allegations that this is just victimization because you can't arrest 20 people and none of them is convicted. No, look, we also expect them to be convicted if they are arrested. And we also expect them to, to account. The police do their work without instructions from us, without instructions from ZANU-PF. Now, if the investigations are still being conducted, ZANU-PF has no role to play there. And if they are not going to be convicted, so be it, because uh, it's the, the, that's the legal process. The criminal procedure works in a way that is defined under the Criminal Procedure Act, and we, we, we have no role there. And these are people who are supposed to be parliamentar parliamentarians, some of them, who understand the law, who understand how the law works in Zimbabwe. And then there is this new case of a guy called Senge Zuchavago waking up one day, recalling members of Triple C, and they are also alleging that this is a ZANU PF head there. You are the ones paying Senge Zuchavago to destabilize Triple C because you want to reduce their numbers in parliament. They, they are giving us the credit which we don't deserve. Who, who, everybody knows who Senga Zuchawang is in, in, within their circles. We don't know uh, Senga Zuchawang in our circles. They know him. He has been part of them. Before the elections, we saw Senga Zuchawang complaining about their own internal processes. Yeah. It's an internal matter. He complained. And we are told that he, he is the one who is targeting those that he didn't sign uh, the, the nomination papers for. So it's an internal process. Zampev has no role in the squabbles that uh, are coming out of the strategic ambiguity confusion. So we are also observers and the bystanders and confused as to how can a political party be run in, those, in that kind of way. Yeah, but now there is the Speaker of Parliament. Do you think 
Don't you think it was too fast to recall these guys? Because as you are saying, triple C, as we know it, public, it doesn't have structures. And then somebody wakes up. Don't you think there was supposed to be some form of maybe due diligence done to, uh, to, to, to prove that this guy uh, is indeed the SEO already? The Speaker of Parliament had these documents that he is the substantive speaker, speaker I mean, the substantive SG of the party. The Speaker of Parliament also is another arm of government, which <laughs> Zanupiev doesn't run. And uh, there is this confusion to conflate uh, Zanupiev with all state institutions or all arms of the state. Uh, we believe that the Speaker of Parliament, before he made a decision, he satisfied himself as to the authenticity of uh, those letters and also as to whether that person who sent the letter was a bona fide uh, representative of that particular party. And we are not uh, going to interfere as to how the Speaker carries out their, his, his duties. It is up to them to, to, to use the legal process or to use whatever uh, means that uh, is accorded by the Constitution of Zimbabwe to correct whatever they think has been done on them. Okay, and then going forward, you said you're already focusing on running the country. Triple C, on the other hand, are still out there. They said they're disengaging from parliament and councils. Of course, we hear that they were in parliament yesterday. Uh, but now they are saying that they should be, if there are no fresh elections, because it's not likely that the SATIC is going to force any fresh elections because they don't have the power to. And their report, as you have said, already clearly stated that some aspects, and we have to debunk the myth that the, the SATIC said that uh, the elections in Zimbabwe are null and void. They never said that. They don't have the power to say that. But they say that some aspects uh, of the elections did not meet the threshold as i've said they then said those with grievances should go to court triple c says the courts are captured but now they're putting pressure they want to hold protests at embassies at borders inside the country because they want either fresh elections or dialogue with zanupiev is zanupiev ready to dialogue with triple c uh, the democratic process was uh, some form of uh, uh, engagement with the uh, C. It led to an outcome where there are representatives from both sides, which must uh, meet in parliament and dialogue. So the dialogue which uh, C wants, they must go to parliament and, and, and uh, raise the issues. They must go and represent their, their constituencies in parliament. If there are any issues that they want to raise which pertain to this election, they must go to parliament. Parliament is a forum which the democratic process does create so that any disputes can be resolved there. So Triple C, for them to be boycotting this and that is drama that is meant to uh, get them sympathy from the international community so that they are always in a perpetual victim mentality where they want to canvas for support so that they get money from donors and then they continue again with their strategic ambiguity. This won't work. Zanupiev uh, has made sure that everybody has a right to vote. The government uh, institutions have made sure that everybody voted and they chose uh, parties of their own choice. See, WC was also chosen. I think they have more than 100 uh, representatives. If, if you look at both houses, they have more than 100 representatives. And they must use that democratic space, which they have been accorded by the people of Zimbabwe, to represent the people of Zimbabwe. Instead of them running from, to embassies, to whatever, they must use that democratic space. If they boycott that democratic space, then they are, they are, they are actually selling out uh, the trust that the people who voted them to, to be in those uh, positions. Zanpiov is looking forward to them, engaging them in parliament. And uh, we, we hope that they will constructively contribute to the building of the country. So are you suggesting that outside parliament there will be no other lines of communication, let's say, between President Emerson Nangakwa and Triple C leader Nelson Chamisa? No, look, uh, as what? I mean, in terms of governing the country, Emerson Nangakwa does not need to engage Chamisa uh, because he has got the mandate and the Zambia has got the mandate to run the country without uh, consulting Chamisa. If you are going to consult the opposition, uh, it is because they are also Zimbabweans. We can consult them uh, in any way, but we don't have to prefer Chamisa over any other the old men sitting somewhere in Binga there. 
we, we will consult with Zimbabweans. And if these guys are Zimbabweans, we will consult them as we run the country. So how do you hope to balance running the country and also trying to not, not pacify, but trying to uh, make sure that the grievances that Triple C are raising are also put into account, or that while running the country, these because they, they are going to destabilize the running of the country, not in that uh, heavy way, but these uh, protests that are continuing, these public uh, spats that are going on, are obviously, are obviously affecting Zimbabwe in the way you're going to run it. So how are you going to balance those two? No, look, uh, the NPF has been here before, where we have uh, people who uh, anti unpatriotic Zimbabweans who, who go about uh, bad mouth in the country or doing all sorts of things that embarrass uh, the country and embarrass themselves. Uh, but we know that the people of Zimbabwe have given us a mandate. We will continue governing. And we, we hope that the, the voters or the, the followers of these people will eventually see through them. And once they see through them, the chickens uh, will come home to roost. And when the chickens are, come home to roost, they will see that these people will uh, be rejected by their own uh, voters. But how do you then see going forward? Because there is the issue of sanctions against Zimbabwe, which we all want to see lifted. But with these negative uh, happenings or allegations of negatives happening, uh, how do you hope to win this fight against sanctions. The SADC has already bought into that, the EU has bought into that. We heard them speaking at the UN General Assembly for the lifting of sanctions against Zimbabwe. But now we have Zimbabweans within saying that these things are happening. The same thing that have been mentioned, especially in Zidera, that unless and until they are corrected, Zimbabwe, the sanctions against Zimbabwe are not going to be lifted. So. How do you hope to win this fight against sanctions? Because we need, you need each other. You also need Triple C as the mainstream opposition to buy into the fight against sanctions. But with this happening, uh, we don't foresee them buying into that. So how do you hope to win this fight if you don't engage them uh, specifically as Triple C? No, look, uh, this is where their bread is battered. We, we don't hope to, to engage them. Uh, but we know that we'll engage Zimbabweans. Triple C, as a party, it thrives on falsehoods. It thrives on uh, creating negative perceptions about the country. So we don't think that we can drive them away from their strategic uh, ambiguity program, which involves them uh, creating falsehoods around how the country is run, creating negative perceptions which allows them to extort money from international community, which they use, again, to run their programs. Okay. And then, just briefly, ZANU-PF has won the election. There is not going to be a fresh election up to 2028. What does ZANU-PF promise Zimbabweans out there uh, who are, even those in the diaspora, who want to go back home to, because they are living a life that they don't like here, a life that is not even life at all, and Zimbabweans who are at home who are desperate for bread and butter issues to be addressed. What is your promise to them as ZANU-PF? Uh, ZANU-PF has embarked on a massive program to ensure that no one is left behind in terms of uh, our development trajectory. If you read uh, the past few uh, news out outlets, they will tell you that Zimbabwe's economy is growing. It is one of the fastest growing economies. Uh, but partly because from where we come from, we, we, are, we, are, we are the fastest growing. And we think that Zimbabweans need to change their perception about the Zimbabwe situation. For a long time, our country has uh, attracted negative, uh, negativity, uh, which people still think exists. Uh, those in Zimbabwe are already witnessing some changes uh, both in infrastructure development, roads are being constructed, uh, industries are being opened. Uh, if you go to to that area near, I think it's near Mvuma, 
there's a huge steel company which is being uh, set up, uh, which is going to revolutionize the industrial base of Zimbabwe. And those that are outside, I am advising everybody to quickly go back to Zimbabwe and look at opportunities that they can grab because Zimbabwe is now attracting a lot of uh, investment and they must not be left behind. Uh, I've, I've come across a lot of Zimbabweans who say uh, that, that they see a lot of people going to Zim, what is happening? I said, go there. Because I know I've been there and there's huge demand. Those who have learned in Zimbabwe are getting into farming, they're getting markets from as far as China, Saudi Arabia, they are exporting to Angola, Jersey. So it's important that people go back to Zimbabwe and start building their country. Uh, we are not going to build this country by uh, sitting in foreign land and uh, you know, being on social media and then think that things will change. The things will change when we go down there and see what is happening. Well, I hope you have it. Let you hear it, ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the end of this show, whereby we were talking to Zanu PF South Africa spokesperson Sununguli Walter Mbongolwani. We welcome your thoughts, your comments, or even any questions that you might have. If it means bringing him back to the studio, then we will request that he comes back because these sort of engagements are going to be eye-openers for us. There are issues that we are fighting over because either we don't understand well or we choose to deliberately twist for political purposes. So we're going to continue to have these discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you. Thank you very much.